John here, guys, and today we're talking about the VoxLab Aquila, the latest 3D printer on the market. Now, if this thing looks and feels very familiar, that's because it's essentially a clone of the Ender 3 V2. Now, if you saw my review of that, you know all of the advanced features that the Ender 3 V2 offer over the standard Ender 3, which is already incredibly good. Well, what's notable about this is that it has all of those upgrades you get with the Ender 3 V2, but it's at a price that's even lower than the original Ender 3. That's right, this printer can be had for $169. Links are in the description below. And if you're not convinced yet, let me go over all the reasons why you should be buying this thing. If you're not printing yet, look at this Deadpool movie bust that I printed out. This is several pieces and my goodness, it comes out beautiful. Here is a Stormtrooper helmet that I downloaded off the of Thingiverse and I printed a lot of very small models as well. I printed on this thing both PLA like this and TPU filaments. So if you are a drone pilot or anybody else that needs some flexible filament printing, this will get you started out of the box. Now there's plenty of tuning and upgrade videos for the Ender series of printers. And what's nice about this is that although you're not paying the Ender price, you still get all of that community support because everything is the same. Here are the upgrades that it offers over the original Ender. It has a glass bed, which is about a $20 upgrade. It has a silent board on there, which reduces all of the motor noise. You cannot hear it. Only thing you can hear when this thing is running is the fan. That is about a $40 upgrade. It has um, upgraded extrusions with tensioners for the X and Y axis belts. Having those belts tight means that your print quality is gonna be as good as it possibly can. And on the original set of Enders, there wasn't an easy way to adjust that tension. These come with tensioners built in. That's about a 30 or $40 upgrade right there. It also has a color screen uh, and a really nice overhaul enhancement of their user interface. The printer is so easy to use. It has bright, colorful icons on there that you can just click through. It's very nice out of the box. This thing only took me about an hour to put together. It's basically the same exact assembly as the Ender 3 V2. I actually think the instructions that came with this one were a little easier to follow. I ended up getting stuck one point putting together my Ender 3 V2 that took me about an extra 45 minutes versus this one. So really easy to put together. Uh, there are tunings that you can do to get everything perfect, but I wanted to show you these prints untuned. So let's take a look at everything. Let's take a look at some of the prints here. You can see this Baby Yoda does have a little bit of stringing, but the detail is exceptional. Now this little blue astronaut is a torture test. It is scaled down to about 20% and it's super tiny. Uh, all but the best printers will have some stringing, but the detail is still excellent. This red is a TPU battery protector for a drone. It printed really well with standard flexible settings out of the box. You could tune some of that stringing out. The beige is a sample print that was straight off of the SD card printed exceptionally good. And here is this little turquoise Benchy. The Benchy printed really great with only minor stringing. Now what's notable about all of this is that the beige um, sample print actually printed with almost no stringing at all. The detail is exceptional on all of these. So the nice thing about the sample prints is that is G-code slice specifically for this printer. So as you are tuning, you know that you can re reach that benchmark if you put a little bit of effort into it. Honestly, a one quick swipe with a heat gun would eliminate all of these strings. Uh, what's more important is the detail that you see underneath all of that stringing. And I left supports on the Baby Yoda and on this battery pad so you can see how the supports print. They pulled off rather nicely, super easily. One other really nice print that I was able to do was this Mandalorian helmet. 
this thing I printed as large as I could fit on the build volume so I had to scale it down to about 67 percent you possibly could get a little bit larger but not by much and this thing took 32 hours to print now this is a fresh roll of clear PLA filament and look how beautiful this filament turns out it is really good uh, stuff right here I'm quite happy with this filament right here. You can see it's a 3D Solutech. I'll leave a link for this in the description below. And it just pulls off of the build plate super easily. I printed it upside down so it would require less supports, less material, and go a little bit faster. And just a quick slap with the scraper horizontally and it pops right off detail and clarity if you touch the side of this thing it came out so amazingly smooth now this is not really large enough to fit on an adult's head if you wanted to do something like that you're actually going to need to print um, something that is a bit larger just to give you an idea of scale this is one that can actually fit on your head that was printed on a CR10 that took 52 hours to print uh, so this is about as large as you can go. If you want to get a full size one, you're going to have to cut this up into four or six pieces in your slicer software. There's tutorials of how you can do that. And then you would assemble it like this. This is all one piece though. So I wanted to see just how large I could get. So here is one of those torture tests. You can see the Prusa on the left and the Aquila on the right. Detail is very similar with a little bit of minor stringing. Again, this is incredibly small of a print. It's an absolute torture test. There's an SD card right there for scale. You can see the Aquila did have a little bit of trouble on that last foot where the nozzle came away. It still is able to stand on its own and actually prints in this orientation. Uh, but this again is with zero tuning, a little bit of tuning, and that will clean that for you right up. So here is a little bit more of that. Really nice job by this $169 printer. Now let's do a TPU comparison. Again, we have the Prusa on the left and the Aquila on the right. If you kind of look at the bottom, you can see that the Prusa is a little bit cleaner. Again, that is an $800 printer that has direct drive. And this printed in about two and a half hours. This printed in about five and a half hours. So the Prusa can print twice as fast. That's what you're getting for when you pay for that money. You can see that the edge is a little bit cleaner on that Prusa, of course, but this is still actually quite nice and very usable. The flexibility on both feels very similar. Again, a little bit more cleanup is going to be required on this, but this is out of the box with no tuning. Part of what you get for with the Prusa, part of why you pay more is because those things come tuned for you. Um, they have profiles that are specifically made for the different types of filaments. This one requires a little bit more research if you want to get a product that's closer to this, but the fact that it prints totally usable, I'm going to go fly this on a drone as a battery protector, no problem at all. Some of the supports failed. That was really my own fault in the slicer settings. But even given that, it still printed out totally fine. It printed like this. This one did have a little bit more stringing, uh, but again, that would clean up super fine. I'm showing you these prints straight off of the printer. Some of these supports uh, kind of collapsed and they did have a little bit of these strings that would just kind of easily just come off. No problem. Very nice, uh, kind of a hand sized print if you can compare it like that. Really nice for a little desktop organizer or some kind of decoration. And finally, we have this Deadpool bust from the movie. Really nice. This is a multi-part piece. Printing multi-part pieces are a good way to test the tolerances. These are meant to fit together. And so if everything is good on the calibration, they will fit together. If not, you will not get them to fit together and everything fit actually pretty well. 
There is this base, this midsection, the head, and the two shoulders all fitting together very nicely. Um, there was also a piece of this model that was some swords that would fit in the back. This is the one that was the hardest to print. I printed it in kind of this orientation with supports uh, along this bottom that this bottom that broke off just fine. So if you're not printing, this is the way to go. This is cheaper than a desktop paper printer at this point, and it comes with a variety of upgrades that make it extremely attractive. I have an $800 Prusa 3D printer, which is considered one of the top model printers, and I did a couple of comparisons back and forth to see just how the quality compared. Now keep in mind, you can tune this ender with some tutorials. I'll put links to those up here but if you're not familiar with doing that you can still expect really great prints right out of the box so it's so easy to use you just download the cura software the latest version as of this video is 4.9 i went ahead and got cheps who is another youtuber on their default profiles that he's kind of come out with you just load those up slice it and hit print and all of a sudden you have the ability to make objects in your home. The TPU quality was not quite as good uh, without any tuning compared to my Prusa, but that's an $800 printer. These prints in TPU are perfectly usable though for a drone pilot or anybody else that just needs these pieces for protection. And if you spend a little bit of time doing teaching text calibrations, you'll be able to get that gap in quality much, much closer. What do you think in the comments, guys? Are you printing yet? Have you started printing? Look at the quality of this versus an $800 printer. Look at the quality of this stuff out of the box. I just can't believe all of the upgrades that you get. It comes with a silicone sock on the hot end that really keeps everything nice and contained and helps prevent some of that heat creeping onto your prints. It's just beautiful. Now one, two gripes that I have is they did omit one nice feature of the Ender 3 V2, which was it had a tiny little drawer at the front that you could store some of the tools in. That's no longer there compared to the Ender 3 V2. It does have a nicer screen that lays horizontally. I actually like that better on the Vox Lab Aquila, but they did not upgrade the actual backend software. So it is a new front end that looks very nice. But one thing that I don't like is that you can't see the full file name on the printer. You have this large, beautiful screen, but it still only limits the file name that will display to like 10 or 12 characters. So if you have a rather long file name, you can't see the whole thing. That's a minor gripe. I mean, you just, Keep in mind, you'll only be able to see the first several characters of the file name, but man, I just can't believe this. This is the printer for all of you FPV drone pilots. This is the printer for anybody that wants to learn how to print. It's so easy. It's never been this affordable and it's never been this reliable. Thanks guys.